The Hampshire Jail and House of Corrections stands on one of the many picturesque rolling hills just outside of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, a home to approximately 250 inmates. A plethora of activities offer inmates hope of reintegrating themselves into a life without crime or recidivism. Towards this end, daily activities center on a variety of work, educational and treatment programs. I truly believe that people are sent here uh, as punishment and not for punishment. Uh, along with that, I do not believe that we are in a position to make judgments on whether or not the guilt or innocence of these people or the, the magnitude of their crime or what their crime is. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't really care to know what their crime is. Uh, what I care to know is where they are in their life's journey. Uh, obviously, if one were to look at the stereotypical person who comes into this uh, facility, you could see that there are a lot of holes in their, in their lives. And I, I think we have an opportunity, as uh, brief as it might be that they're here, to give them an opportunity to address the issues that uh, got them here and hopefully turn them around and so when they leave they don't return. Men that have been at other correctional facilities are just uh, so grateful and so thankful to be at Hampshire County. The, the sheriff receives a number of letters each day from incarcerated men across the state asking to be able to come to our facility. The programs and the um, treatment and the education offered there are one of a kind. Because the facility is secure, because the uniform staff does a good job in keeping it secure, there's not a lot of violence for a correctional facility, there's not a lot of um, escape attempts, suicide attempts, there is here like there is anywhere else. But we, because it's small, because the, the security staff is uh, pretty vigilant, uh, we're able to do these treatment programs. I was out one evening at a labyrinth walk given by Lori Villamir and just fell in love with the process of walking a labyrinth and asked if she would come to the jail and do a program for the inmates. I was here waiting for a class to end and I was invited by Lori Villamere to walk the labyrinth. I had never done it before, so I decided this would be a great opportunity for me to learn something new. And as soon as I did it, I was um, hooked and decided this would be a wonderful thing um, to incorporate into stress reduction education. We did one, and the response was, we want to you know, do this again. Can, um, can Lori come back? Can we have more programming? And so it just evolved. I had invited some of the men to come to where I have an in-ground labyrinth and the sheriff came with them. And he saw the effect of the labyrinth walk on the men. And he also walked it himself and saw the effect on himself. I was sold, totally sold the first time. Sold and convinced that this thing had much more power than I ever would imagine. When we started saying, wouldn't it be nice, Sheriff, if we could have a labyrinth here? And he says, yes, it would be. And if you can get the money, go ahead. And the Sheriff approved the whole process. They just needed somebody to design and build it. So they actually looked to our Department of Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning, uh, which we had actually already been doing a lot of studies with restorative environments and how uh, landscapes and the physical environment can have a positive impact. I had this anonymous donor who gave a significant amount of uh, a donation which helped us really say yes we can do this. The biggest cost in most um, projects is the labor and that was free. The goal in anything that we do here is to look at something new and see if it is something that we may be able to make function for the inmate population and this, this was the goal of this project. It's skill-based and building skills is something that we try to do as much of here as we possibly can, particularly when we can identify something that's pro-social. Uh, the inmates who are incarcerated here participate in lots of groups all day and into the evening. They do OUI groups, they do criminal thinking groups, substance abuse groups, as well as education and vocational training. And so we require a pretty high level of participation from all the men who we have in our programs here. And in that same effort, we want to treat the whole person. 
So the labyrinth is an opportunity to support that individual who's doing a lot of work here and find opportunities to reflect, stop and think. You know, a lot of substance abusers have a ready, shoot, aim approach to problem solving. And this gives us the opportunity to do something different. You know, that's one of the key things of being in here is to stay busy. You know, if you're staying busy, then you feel good about yourself. You feel like you have a nice routine going. Originally when the project started, I wasn't very familiar with labyrinth at all. I mean, my understanding was pretty much uh, the layman in terms of a maze or something from like the David Bowie uh, Labyrinth, Jim Henson movie, you know, so I mean, my understanding was pr very minimal. And it's simply a circular path that leads to the center and back out again. The way in is the same as the way out, so you can't get lost. It's a design that's probably about 4,000 years old. Um, the design was uh, initially found in southern Europe and uh, in throughout the centuries have uh, been displayed and used in, in every culture and in every country. The history is, is particularly important in the Middle Ages where people made pilgrimages, people of all faiths, and uh, became very dangerous because of the Crusades. So they used the labyrinth as a substitute. The design itself is a symbol of oneness, unity, wholeness. And one of the things that does happen as a result of these men walking the labyrinth and meeting every week with the classes, they do build a sense of community and support one another. And very often they, in their discussions, are very honest, open, and respectful of one another's uh, situation. The Labyrinth Walking Program is an easy, affordable, stress reduction program. It isn't just a case of the men coming in and walking. You know, there are certain themes. Um, let me just take the example of forgiveness. Um, that is probably one of the most important themes in, in the six-week program, probably because it hits home more than, than anything else. Uh, we talk about the different stages of forgiveness, how to um, implement it in your life, how to look at forgiveness from another person's pers uh, perspective. Uh, they may even write letters of forgiveness um, whether it's to themselves or to a member of the family, so that there are practical ramifications in each theme that will have an impact on their life. Walking a labyrinth is a physical activity, so part of the meditation process is actually focusing on taking one step at a time. And like they say in AA, one day at a time, well, one step at a time. It gives people a time to step aside, get out of the hecticness of, of daily living, and simply take a walk so they can put all tensions aside and simply listen to their body because sometimes the body has a message that the mind can't give. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, it's called a tool for transformation. The idea came up, we're inside using this portable labyrinth and we have all this beautiful land. We have men that would be delighted to work on it. I said, if we can build one outside, would anybody be willing to get out there and take a shovel and get building? And they, it was unanimous. They all were, were thrilled about the idea. And then the inmates themselves were the ones that wanted to build one outside. Why can't we have one outside? And so we said, well, maybe you can. <laughs> And then it all just happened. It became a, a real inmate program. The planning, the design, the, the uh, building of the labyrinth and the maintenance of the labyrinth and so forth. So it was much more than just the program of you're going to walk this this uh, a program and it's going to do wonders for you and so forth. I worked directly with the inmates uh, to build it and I wasn't there all the time because it would be impossible for me to be, be there all the time. They'd work in like three hour increments sometimes depending on their schedule. But uh, 
Working with the director was really, I mean, it was an eye-opening experience for me, and I had some trepidation at first going into it. Uh, you know, not any judgments or anything, but I mean, didn't know how the process would be if there'd be going to be like, you know, guards on horseback monitoring us. But it was really pretty um, low key. There was usually one guard that would uh, escort me, and and then I just worked with the guys, and you know, we'd be kind of just working as if we were outside on a job site, which I think was really beneficial for them because they got the feeling of, say, you know, kind of breaking down those prison walls, I think was the most rewarding thing uh, as far as the experience goes. I started doing this just to help out, try to give back to my community. Um, I thought it would be something constructive to do to uh, fill my free time with and keep myself busy. The men that participate in the Labyrinth Project are men who are already engaged in the treatment program that we have here. So they're looking to do something extra and they're looking to learn a new skill. You have to um, say that's you know great for them that they've been as overwhelmingly supportive of this and actually uh, have spearlet a number of the projects to get it done. The people with experience under the guidance of our landscape architect Patrick um, worked with the people with no experience and there's always manual labor to be done. And when we first started I think there was 20 guys involved in it but it was when they were doing most of the work it was pretty hot and uh, so that whittled down considerably after a while but yeah we start with a list of people that they determined they wanted to work on it then it went through myself and several other people as to whether they were appropriate to be out there in the first place because there was some trust involved they were working outside without direct supervision from correctional staff because it was so labor intensive and it took a lot of time so we couldn't just assign a staff member to keep an eye on them so we had to have people out there that we could trust at least as far as that you know that they wouldn't try to get over the fence or try to get drugs and thrown over whatever so um, that was the first process and then as far as the labor itself we had to screen to a certain extent the tools that were coming in then we had an inventory and keep track of them as well where is the safest place to to put it so it can be utilized and at the same time uh, not create a problem for the rest of the security of the facility uh, there's also the idea that um, what do you use for materials uh, depending on the types of materials you use uh, you may end up in a situation where you create uh, a security problem for uh, the security staff or the safety of the other inmates. So those things were looked at when we were choosing materials. Um, such things as uh, in this labyrinth we're using shrubbery. How high is the shrubbery going to be? Uh, obviously in a facility like this we don't want it high enough so that somebody could hide behind it. So the shrubbery is low to the ground and um, the rocks are not big enough that they could become a weapon. Everybody in here is aware of security. Security basically comes first in any facility. Our first obligation is the safety of the community, so that, you know, care and custody, as they would say in the trade. Some of the approval and sight lines, things like that, things that normally another project you wouldn't have to worry about, uh, we, have, we had to be kind of cognizant of what the guards could see and, and making sure that they could monitor all the inmates at all times. We couldn't have anything that was 10 feet tall or something. There was some uh, there was a post out there at one time that looked like it might be as high up as the uh, the top of the fence, so we kind of knocked that down a little bit. So it's just little things like that. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to be able to lean something against the fence and run up and over. Yeah. That would be problematic. <laughs> it was a lot of work to move the stones and to, uh, especially with bad weather, which came all the time. It was snowing, it was raining, and every time we'd get to do a little bit, then we'd have 10 steps back. Uh, but they kept going and they were enthusiastic and they worked very, very hard. Uh, had a little sunburn, so there were things like that that we worried about as well. Because uh, they like to be out there with their shirt off because it was so hot. Uh, we did not use any power tools, only shovels and men worked to clear an area 75 by 75, only using shovels and wheelbarrows. But during those days, we ran to a lot of rain. And some days it rained like two or three days straight. But when they called the guys to come to Labyrinth, you seen guys put on boots, plastic bags as raincoats, 
come out here and do what needed to be done to clear the grass that needed to be cleared. It was a process where I thought it would never get done, to be honest with you. You know, we opened up the field and dug up all the grass and I was just this one big circle of dirt. And I was like, oh man, this is never gonna get done. And, um, you know, slowly but surely, with just hard work, we kept on working at it. And, you know, we'd get gravel dropped off and then we'd get the stones dropped off and we just kept on laying stones down and, and uh, it started actually coming out looking like something. The stones are bluestone and um, that required a lot of bluestone. And of course there's gravel, there was a lot of um, excavation work prior to, to this being laid. And of course for the finishing of it, a um, lot of mulch, a lot of plants, and many of them were donated by people in the area. So we've been very fortunate in getting a lot of donations, a lot of volunteers, and a lot of help with this. This area has several red-tailed hawks that fly in the area. And on one of those particular days, we were out here with four or five guys that were working and a red-tailed hawk landed in the center of the beginning of the labyrinth, came down, scooped down, just landed, and then took off. And that's probably where the name, you know, that we've kind of created has come from, you know, um, and we're calling it the Red-Tailed Hawk Labyrinth. We were fortunate to be surrounded by red-tailed hawks the day of our labyrinth groundbreaking. Hopefully they will watch over the construction and dedication and be our companions on many labyrinth walks. We, we try very hard with an outstanding staff to provide people opportunities to change and to change in a, in a positive way where they're going to be able to address the issues that got them here as clients. And it's only because of the fact that the dedication and the, and the work of the staff here that these things happen. A real big plus was the dedication of the, the clients, many of them in this room today, that went out there with the, the shovels and the, and, the, uh, and the picks and so forth and did this manual labor for, a, for an extended period of time. And it was manual, so manual that I stayed away from it as far as I could. But however, however, you know, through, through this whole process, through this whole process, these gentlemen were sold on the whole idea and philosophy of the labyrinth. You find out that these guys are not bad guys. There's no doubt in my mind that these guys are not bad guys. I'm not a bad guy. I just made the wrong choice. The Labyrinth Project definitely will have an impact on the community of inmates here at the Hampshire County Jail. I think that will have an ultimate impact on the entire community, that is the correctional staff as well as the treatment staff. One of the inmates said to me after he had walked the labyrinth, he slept the first night all night long since he'd been here and he had a wonderful dream. Another one that I remember, he said he got into a very difficult situation. He almost was going to get into a fight and he thought about it and he went to his room and he did some deep breathing and relaxation technique and there was no fight. Maybe you had stuff on your mind that bothered you. Maybe you have goals that you want to, you know, set for yourself in the future for when you get out. Um, maybe you're just having a bad day and you need time to think to yourself. You go out there, walk around the labyrinth, and it does give you a like, nice peace of mind. When you look at the atmosphere at the jail, I mean, you, you have mountains in the background, you have a lot of greenery and that sort of thing. You do have a fence with razors on it. And right in front of that is a labyrinth with flowers. That, that is huge. And to see the contrast between the two is uh, quite startling. And when the men walk it, I mean, you can just sense peace coming over them. I'm just amazed at what um, a small group of people can do, each with their own particular skill, coming together to create something that I think is pretty amazing. Being there from day one and seeing just this, like this big circle of mud 
until now just standing out there and seeing like the nice stone laid out and the flowers and the plants. It's a beautiful thing to know that you worked at that and you built that. It was a challenge, you know, some people had little, you know, work experience and the challenge, you know, trying to work together as a team, that what pays off in the long run. Everything went extremely well and I think we, we definitely did the best we could and, and have a great product. If they have anger issues or if, if they have high anxiety or whatever or just having a bad day, if they can go out you know, walk around and meditate on it a little bit and rather than having to, to deal with them in a, on a physical level or they go and pace their roommate or, or just, you know, get very frustrated and, and have an incident because of that, everything here, as far as the treatment, if it, if it impacts one individual, it makes the facility that much safer. One thing that most people forget is that 98% of the population that are housed in correctional facilities in the United States return to their community. If we, during the process of incarceration, can help them to uh, get to a better place in their mind uh, and in their behavior, then we better all a society. Equally important is the fact that they did it themselves, so they have an ownership to it. So, you know, uh, people sometimes worry about, well, will there be Will they take advantage and destroy it and people who are not involved, will they do things that are, would not be appropriate and so forth? No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen because it's theirs and they, are, they have an ownership to it because they did the planning, they did the building, they are going to maintain it and they're going to participate. This is called the Prisoner's Labyrinth Poem. Many paths stretched before my eyes and I made decisions that were unwise. A punishment was required to pay because of my choices along the way. I now dwell behind prison walls where I no longer walk so tall. Yet life is transformed, I'm told, when new visions replace the old. Peace overcomes conflict and fear while I walk the labyrinth we built here. The labyrinth is a special, sacred space in the jail yard, I find this place. I walk the labyrinth path with no bars and travel distances ever so far. Over time, new visions become clear. With new life values I now hold dear. I carry within my being the tools I need for healing. I hear guidance from my inner voice and gain the courage to make the right choice. And this was written by Lori Villamere, the author of our curriculum. <laughs>